here. So basically, whatever you want to do is what we get to do. Have a look. So types of questions and then topics of questions. I'd love to do vector diagrams. Which one? So with vector diagrams, we're talking about adding vectors, for example, or we could be talking with vector diagrams. We could be talking about adding displacement vectors to find a net displacement. So vector sum diagrams. OK. So looking at vector sum diagrams. Uh, the classic thing would be displacement. When we talk about vector sum diagrams, we are interested in good morning. When we're talking about vector sum diagrams. We are interested in adding a number of different displacements to find a net, a final displacement for our character. OK, so, you know, graphically to represent that we might have always will always have an orientation. Which could be north, south, east and west. There'll be a scale. And how you represent the scale can vary. You know, I might just say this is one kilometer. OK, and then there will be either a series of statements or you'll actually have where you actually have to draw the diagram or there'll be a series of state. Uh, the diagram will be there, which you then have to figure out. OK, so for example, if we then start with our person here. OK, and we would have to ask the question, what is their net displacement? If we're given a series of these displacements, we might call this one S1, S2, S3, S4 and S5. So we add them all together. We we use this this symbol. It doesn't really matter. Like in year 11 and 12, we use this symbol sigma, meaning sum. So the sum of all the displacements is equal to S1 plus S2 plus S3 plus S4 plus S5. And then, you know, we can add them all together, but they don't really add up nicely. So, for example, this guy here is, you know, this guy here is 2.1 north, uh, kilometres north. And this guy here, S2, is 2.1 kilometres uh, west. So we start adding them all together, but you can't add north and west. So you'll break them down into a series of north souths. So that one that might be 2.1. Um, that's going to be 4.2. That's going. Uh, maybe that's 5.5.1. Yeah. Okay. So this would be this will be 2.1. This will be 5.1. I'm just making numbers up. Kilometers south, three kilometers north. Okay. So we'll take all the north south values and find a result for them. And then we find, OK, dot, 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 which equals zero kilometers north south. OK, north or south. Plus zero kilometers south, if you like, you don't have to say that it's zero. You don't have to say it. And then we say, well, what is this? And we'll find that when we add this to this, that one was 2.1. This was 6.1. So our net, our net vector ends up being this value. There's our net vector. Uh, sorry, I keep doing that. Net vector. Also, you could also say S total or S final. These are all with terminologies. <laughs> okay. So for vector diagrams, it's all about looking at what you've got and then breaking them down into the two cardinal dimensions. The two cardinal dimensions. Hello, everyone. Come on in. And that'll help you decide what you want to do. OK. All right. We're getting a few people around. Does that anything else you want to talk about with that? Do you want to talk about situations where it's not so convenient? OK. So the question I've been asked um, people is. With these types of vector sum diagrams. What skills do you need to have? So the problem is you'll always have, you'll always need an orientation. It could be north, south, east, and west. You'll always have a scale. The orientation could be north, south, east, and west. It could be um, forwards, backwards, left, and right. Any of these things are options, okay? Uh, now, you will be given, perhaps, you'll be given a series of values. S1 equals 2.1 kilometers north. 
S2 equals, what did we say it was? 5.1 kilometres south. S3, S4, S5 equals, equals, equals. You get all these values and you would draw out, if it isn't given to you, you draw out the vector diagram and you'd always draw the tail head, tail head, tail head. Because that's how we add vectors, tail head, tail head, tail head. When we look for the sum vector or the net vector or the total vector of this displacement arena, then we join it tail tail of the first vector to head head of the final vector. Now we could solve this if we've got done a good job with our orientation, done a good job with our scale. We don't need to solve this mathematically. We can just get out our ruler and say, okay, well, that's about what do we got there? That's about this distance, 20 of those. Um, what's 20? What's 20 divided by seven? It's about three. About three, approximately three kilometers, which this is actually about. I went for about four. That's what I was going for. But yeah, I didn't exactly try very hard. So as I, I look at it, if I if I'm not, I'd always look. Am I being asked to solve it mathematically or graphically? If I'm being asked to solve it graphically, I'll be happy because all it's all going to be very nice. We don't expect you to have a protractor. Okay, so we know you're not going to be able to measure the angles. We know that. All right, when you walk into the exam. So if I've asked you to solve something graphically, um, then I'll probably, you'll probably find it's going to be a convenient set of numbers. If you draw it on, you'll probably find it's a convenient set of numbers. If you've done any of my quizzes, done any of my tests, you'll know that I very often give you very convenient numbers in this year 10 level. They disappear in year 11, the convenient numbers. Okay, but they are there in year 10. So you could be solving it graphically, at which point get out the ruler, get out the Get out the protractor and actually go through and do it all and then measure it. And you should get exactly the same answer if you solve it mathematically. If you want to solve it mathematically, then you take all these different values and you group them into north-souths, group them into east-wests. OK, um, and that's pretty much how you solve those. All right. I don't know if I can give you much more on that. All right, free body diagrams are all about finding the net force of a body. When we talk about Newton's first law of motion, we say that um, a body and that it's singular, a body will remain at rest, not moving, or in uniform motion, that means moving with one speed and one direction. A body will remain at rest or in uniform motion unless acted upon by a net external force. Free body diagrams are about finding the net external force. With free body diagrams, we definitely want an orientation again. So going for the simplest free body diagram, if you if you Google uh, free body diagram images, you'll get this image I'm about to draw for you now. OK. So we have the free body diagram of a book on a table. This is the most common one. And our free body diagram always the vectors go now. As you go into year 11, we always attach the vectors to the center of mass, okay? But you'll see in the in the computers, they just kind of put it above and below our diagram. That is the simplest free body diagram that we've got. We ask the question, how many forces are acting on the book? There is one, two forces. This is not an appropriate free body diagram because diagrams have labels. What would be a good label for that vector? What would be a good label for that vector? Any thoughts? This is the force of gravity pulling the book down. So we might label it force due to gravity. OK, this is the force of the table pushing the book up. Force due to the table. OK, so we have a free body diagram net force. For this free body diagram, net force equals zero newtons. Because that vector and that vector are identical, this free body diagram is moving not at all. It is stationary. It is at rest. So there is no net force. So we have our free body diagram. That's the simplest one. All right, let's get a more, a slightly more challenging free body diagram. Okay. All right, so we have the shopping trolley. The shopping trolley is very, very heavy. 
it's got lots of forces acting on it. We've got a force of drive, a driving force. There is a drag force. There is an up force and a down force, okay? This is a more complicated free body diagram. In this free body diagram, we need to label these vectors. What are these forces acting on the trolley? Now, if you don't get exactly the right label on the vector, it's not a big deal. As long as I know what you're doing, you might put down here weight. You might put down weight force instead of force due to gravity. That's fine. Not a problem with me at all. Okay? If I look at it, it makes sense. If it's true, there are many different types of true. So if it's force due to gravity, you might say weight. That's all very valid. Um, for this one here, you might put down force due to the ground pushing up. That's fine. You might also put you might also put the letter R, which in year 11 physics means reaction force of the ground pushing up. Um, you might put the letter N. I would do these things, but I'm not that stressed about it, which means the normal force of the ground pushing up. Normal force is the type of reaction force, just a perpendicular one. OK, that's fine. That equals that. So our net force vertically is zero. But our horizontal net forces definitely don't add up to each other. So when we look at that one here, we've got, you could call this thrust, you could call this drive. So we've got a drive force, labeling our forces. What would you call that one? Yeah, you could have so many choices. You would get full marks for that. That's fine. You got air resistance, a lot of lot of letters, A, I, R, R, E, S, you know, lots of letters there to write on the page. What's What's a four letter word that means that? And it really makes you feel like, oh man, that's a bummer. Sorry? Drag, okay? So you can put down here, drag. Now we have ourselves a label free body diagram. The only thing that we are missing is the net force. Up and down, cancel out. Uh, right and left, don't cancel out. When I am in a test and I am writing a test as a student, I want to be able to put in a net force that is appropriate. My physical fingers do the following. Are you ready for this? This is what I physically do to put the net force. So the net force is the total of these two. I get my fingers, I put that there. I bring it across to this guy. I put a little dot. And now I know, now I know, this is gonna be my net force. OK, and I'll go F net to label him or her. All right, so we have a net force. This vector plus this vector add up to the F net force. Add up to the F net force. So if this if this drive force, you know, if this drive force equals uh, 300 newtons, if my drag force has a magnitude equal to uh, 60 newtons, then my F net equals to the difference between those. Now my drive force, that, look at that there, that is the magnitude of my drive force, it's the size of it. What is the direction of my drive force? You've got to choose from something here. Right, okay, so it's right. What is the direction of my drag force? left okay so without bothering with all the all the fancy mathematical notation what is the magnitude and direction of my net force 240 newtons and have you got a direction right okay so we've got that there right all right um now the mass of my trolley is equal to 40 Kilograms. What is the acceleration of my trolley? You wanted a calculation. What's an accelerate? What would I use to find the acceleration of my trolley? Okay, so let's you just said times by. Well, sorry? Do you want to say it again? Tell me the equation first. Which equation would you use? <laughs> All right, so we start by declaring 
for the examiner, we de declare for the examiner, this is what I'm going to use. This is the tool in my shed. Here it is. OK, now then we plug in the numbers. What are the numbers I want to plug in? The net force. OK, 240 equals the mass, 40. OK, what is, not you, what is the next line? Someone read the next line out for me. No, because in marking your tests in my class and in marking your test from the exam and in marking my year 11 sometimes as well, the next line is where a lot of us fall over. OK, so we want to isolate the A, so we're going to say A equals, and did you say this over that? All right, correct. OK, so this step from here to here, that rearrangement of the equation is, is really important. You need to make sure you can do that, OK? Um, 240 divided by 40 is, I think, 6 metres per second per second, which quite frankly is insanely fast and this is a ridiculous example it would never happen in real life okay all right so that's an example of a free body diagram and that drifted into drifted into a calculation for newton's second law of motion all right um right so can we do another free body diagram if i give you a piece of paper that's it i'm going to give you a piece of paper you're going to do a free body diagram because i think you guys need to be active as well we have a toy rocket it has a thrust force 660 newtons and that's going to be up it has a weight equal to 15 newtons and that's down and it has a drag force equal to a drag force equal to 15 newtons down okay could you, first of all, draw the free body diagram? And then secondly, determine the acceleration of the rocket, allowing for the fact that the mass of the rocket is going to be 1.53 kilograms. Okay, moving around the room, what have we got? Yeah, have a look around the room, what have we got? Drawing our vector diagrams. Now, you will not get marks for being an artist. Okay, just keep that in mind. And, and you, do need, you do need to be able to answer these questions very, very quickly sometimes. Okay, you do need to be able to answer these questions very, very quickly. Okay, does your vector diagram look a bit like that? So we've got the thrust vector, the drag vector, the weight vector. This is not to scale effectively. Because if I drew it to perfect scale, then 15 newtons would actually be very, 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 very small compared to 660 newtons. So I've just made it as small as I can conveniently. I would not lose marks for that. I have labelled the vectors. I've got the actual magnitudes listed over here. I've got my net vector, which is the sum of these two. I took my two little fingers and I said, right, I'll grab this one, put a little dot here, grab that one, put a little dot here, add them up, put them there. So we have our our vector diagram, our free body diagram, all the information we need to do. Now, let's figure out the acceleration. You've already finished the acceleration? It probably is. I made the numbers up in my head. Um, the, quest, the, the statement from the student is, I have done the question, but it seems unrealistic. It probably is. I made the numbers up in my head. In physics, very often, if it isn't, if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. In topic tests and in assignments and quizzes and exams, we try to write realistic question, questions. OK, so when you go to look at something, Usain, Usain Bolt velocity should not end up being 112 kilometres an hour. You might be mathematically correct if the examiner stuffed up the numbers in the question, though. So this is just this is just ridiculous numbers out of my head and probably not probably not realistic. So don't stress about the fact that it seems unrealistic to you. All right, has everyone had a go at the calculation? You're not doing the calculation. Have you ever got the calculation? Yes. yes. Okay, it's the act of the calculation that helps you. Watching me do the calculation does not help you. So we all like the equation F equals MA. 
But what is F? Is it thrust, weight, drag, or is it net force? It is net force. F <coughs> net. This is our force that we want to use. What is our F net? F net equals F net equals 660 up, subtract 15, subtract 15. Subtract 15, subtract 15. Okay. And then we end up with. Uh, I think it ends up being 630, 630 newtons. And what direction is it? It's going to be up, all right? So now we've got that value, 630 newtons equals our mass, which we've been given, 1.53. And we end up with this acceleration. What is the next line? What is the next line? I'm going to come around and just look. You point point to the next line, and I'll I'll give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay. So our next line A equals six three zero over one point five three equals whatever that number is. What is it? Four hundred and eleven point eight. And what are my units? Meters per second per second. Did someone say that one there? Okay meters per second per second. That is mathematically correct. Does a toy rocket actually accelerate at that speed? I, I don't know. Imagine one in your head. You've seen them. Who's seen one in real life? They kind of go like that, don't they? I don't, I don't actually know if that's realistic or not. Okay, all right. So that's a couple of free body diagrams. Okay, let's do something else. Let's do some calculations. People are asking about efficiency and power. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm to that end. Okay, really wishing I had my, I thought I found it. Found my calculator. So this here, this motor, that's an electric motor. That's an electric motor. We're going to raise this load to this location here. We're going to raise it all the way up to there. And that's going to take us a time of 12 seconds. That's what it's going to take us a time of 12 seconds. Um, we've got a motor. The motor is 612.5 watts. The units for power are watts. Okay. The only reason this is a hard question is because I'm putting in efficiency into it. So I'll break it down into small parts, which are easy parts, all right? The efficiency of the motor, that is the Greek letter eta. We use that to represent efficiency. If you don't like it, just go and write E double F instead. The efficiency of the motor is a big fat mystery. We don't know what it is. Okay, we don't know what the efficiency of the motor is. So we'd be wanting to find that out. Okay, so it's that some information. And quite frankly, make no mistake, if you're looking at that, that's a bloody hard question. That's a year 11 question. But let's ask some year 10 questions in there. OK, first of all, as the load moves up three meters, what is what is the change in the potential energy equal to? Do you know? Do you know the what well, you do if you know the equation for potential energy? Write down on the back of your sheet of paper. On the back of your sheet of paper, what do you think is the equation for potential energy? Let's see if you can remember it. You don't have to remember it because it'll be in the formula and data sheet that you're receiving in the exam. But I wonder if you can remember it. Correct. And you got it as well. Correct. All right. So do this for me now. Calculate the change in the gravitational potential energy as we lift it up. MGH, you all told me. Uh, the mass of the load was 200. Times by G. What's G? Am I G? Are you G? What's G? And what, what is it? What's the number for G? 9.8. Do you need to remember this 9.8? No. Why don't you need to remember it? It's in the formula and data sheet. Okay. You probably will remember it because in life we remember things we don't need to. That's a two. My apologies. That's a two. But in, in my defense, I had to question a number of your H's because a lot of you guys are drawing H's like this. Okay, so I think I'm vindicated. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by that. All right, uh, now, what's my height? 
we said 300, oh, sorry, three, three meters. So it becomes 600 times 9.8. You guys can do that for me. What are my units for this gain in potential energy? Joules is the correct answer. Yes, thank you very much. All right, so we've got joules there. Very good. All right, so that's a year 10. This is a year 11 setup. That's a year 11 setup, okay? But we've just done a year 10 question. Um, what is the work done by this? Do that calculation for me now. What is the work done? What is the work? Think now, this is not a calculation. This is a theory question. I know, how annoying. What is the, what is the definition, the basic definition of work that we give you in year eight? The basic definition of work. Work is what? Changing the universe around us. Have we changed the universe? Yeah, we have, because we've raised the load. So what is the work done as a number? What is the change that we made in the universe? 5,880 joules is the work done. Okay, this is the work done. So now we can say, right, what is the work? Work is 5,880 joules. Do we need up, down, left, right, any of these sorts of things? No, because energy is not a, say it out loud, vector, <laughs> correct, yes. Right, energy is not a vector, so we don't need that. All right. Um, if I wanted to calc, I don't need to, because I, I answered that using theory. If I wanted to calculate the work done, what equation would I use if I wanted to calculate the work done? So work equals, I don't know what, um, I would need the force due to gravity equals something. Uh, I would need the distance equals something. So what is the equation for work? Does anyone remember off the top of their head? Work is equal to Fs. What is the weight of my 200 kilograms? Very good. So weight is equal to, the force due to gravity is equal to, the mass of it, you said 200, times by 9.8, times by, and then of course we've got this S still, S. Now 9.8 is G, right? Okay, mass times G times S. S, the distance, the displacement it moved up. Is there any other letter we can use for that? H, what does this suddenly look like? potential energy, okay? So that equation right there, the change in potential energy, MGH, is MGH from work, the work done. They are the same thing here in this example. Okay, they are the same thing. All right, so work equals 5,880 joules. What is the power? What is the power the useful power performed in this act, and it is not the rating on the motor. So this is a calculation. What is the power what? <laughs> I'll ask that question later. What is the power? Do we have an equation for power? Work over time. So we've got work over time, 5,880 joules, we just said was our work, Five eight. Eight zero over our time we said was 12 seconds so that equals oh my goodness what a convenient number 490 could someone please tell me the units for power what what it's so annoying he's so annoying i hate him what so that is a year 11 setup but we've got a year 10 question determining the change in the potential energy We've got a year 10 question, figuring out what the work was done, which is a theory question, or if you want a calc question, okay? And then we've determined the power demonstrated. Okay, now, efficiency. When we look about, when we go to look at efficiency, and this, this is a really tough question, okay? So I'm gonna give you parts of it to make it a year 10 question. So we've got, we've got power actual, equals 490 
watts. We've got power consumed equals 612.5 watts. And let's talk about that for the moment. So this is this is where we're looking at efficiency. Now, this is where we start looking at efficiency. There's this idea of time. And we said that was, I think, 12 seconds. OK, so looking at efficiency. Or I'm going to do this bit because this bit here is getting a little bit tough. I'm going to do this bit. So when we look at this, our equation for efficiency is equal to useful energy over total <laughs> energy in times by 100. Now, we've got the useful energy. There it is there, 5,880 joules. So we've got that number. We've got that number there. We don't have this number. What is the total energy in? And what was, what was that type of energy anyway? The total energy in is the electricity supplied to this motor. It could be electricity if it's an electric winch. It could be if it's a diesel motor. It could be chemical potential energy that's going into that motor. What is the total energy into the motor such that it does this work? Not all of the energy in becomes gravitational potential in the energy. What does some of it become? Some of it's wasted. Heat, yeah. Heat, sound. So some of it is wasted. That's what we're trying to figure out. How efficient is this electric motor? Is this petrol-based motor? How efficient is it? We're trying to figure that out. So we need to know, well, what was the total energy in here? This is the number we want. E total is the electric energy into that motor. Now, we know that the motor has a power of 612.5 watts because it says it on the side of the motor. That's what they always do. We know the motor was running for 12 seconds. So from that information, can we determine how much energy went into the motor? Yes, we can, using the power equation. So to find um, total energy in, to find total energy in, we use the power equation. Power equals work on time, uh, basically. Then we say work equals P multiplied by T. Now that step from here to here, because we're running out of time, I've just gone and done it. But that step from here to here is one of the steps that I've noticed we struggle with as well. This rearranging of that shape. Anytime you have an equation, this equals that on that, rearranging it seems to be something we need to practice. Okay? So this work here, I'm going to rub it out. At this particular equation, this is total energy in equals PT equals, we said it was 612.5 times by 12 seconds equals whatever that equals. 7350 joules, okay? So now we have some nice numbers. The energy in was the work done, 5880, over the total energy into the electric motor was 7350, times by 100 equals, and I'm just going to do it in my head. I'm going to think like it, but maybe be, it'd be about 80%. It'd be about 80%. Just doing it in my head. You know, you're all witness. Just did it in my head. Okay. We'll see if I'm right. I don't know if I am. Maybe, maybe I'm not. Oh, what do you know? It's 80%. I got that right in my head. You're all witnesses. Okay. So we've got an efficiency type question there. All right, guys, it's 8.20. Any last minute questions? Can I give you some advice for the equations of motion in 10 minutes? All right, I'll give you some advice. So I'm not doing an example. I'm giving you some advice, okay? Okay, read the question. Underline, underline important stuff. So go through the question, read it. Underline important stuff. That's really, really good. Look for words like, you know, look for this sort of language. If it's at rest initially, then you know that it's it's falling. It's it's falling from rest. Its initial velocity is zero. That's that's a key that's a key concept. If it's falling, 
We may not give you the acceleration. If we tell you it's falling, then it's gravity doing the job. 9.8 meters per second per second. OK, um, look for the final velocity, the initial velocity. Um, look for the units in the question. Are they being given to you as kilometers an hour? Are they being given to you as meters per second? OK, the uh, the conversion between those two is in the formula and data sheet, but it's 3.6. Right, so look for those things. All right. Now, to maximize your chance of getting marks, very often in these questions, the marks can vary between two, two to four marks. Oh, you know, it could go as high as five marks. I've seen them get pretty high in year 12. So two to five marks are on, a, on, on order there. To be able to get all the marks, you want to, you want to list your given. So these things that you underline, just write them down. Okay, if you underline them, that's good enough. But for example, if we say it's falling, you'll want to say G equals 9.8, okay? If you underline the initial velocity, that's it. The initial velocity is, you don't need to write that down again, but you know, just make sure you show me the examiner that you know what the important information is. Declare your equation. You have a toolbox of equations. There's lots of them. They are in the formula and data sheet. Actually write out the letters. Do not go straight to the numbers, okay? Write out the actual equation. Then put in the raw numbers in. Now, I would usually, I would actually declare the equation, rearrange it first, then put in the raw numbers. The reason I do that is because I know that my, my algebra is good enough that I can do that comfortably. Um, and I know that if I rearrange it first, very often certain certain values just cancel out and you don't even have to put in the raw numbers for those values. But for you guys, I'd say raw numbers in because I'm not, I'm not, not saying that you need to do that. I'm saying that I've observed over the years that year 10s just prefer to put the raw numbers in first, okay? All right, show me your math. All right, show me your math. Show me your working out. Give me your answer and units. OK, there's two to five marks there. This is my advice to you. Two to five marks there. If you screw this up, I might be able to give you some follow through marks. OK, now in the in the waste exam, if you don't declare the equation and you don't get the right answer, you get nothing. So you've got to be able to show me your reasoning. OK, you've got a certain amount of time. You have to be quick. So you don't want to do everything, but show me enough that I can give you some follow through marks. OK, all right. Thanks, guys. Good morning. Have a great day.